Hey guys, this is Randy from A Fresh Squeeze Life and we're going to talk today about putting tr uh, tissue paper on wood. And um, for me, this is the project that I ended up making. I'm not going to show you how to do the frame and all that. I'm basically, today we're just doing the tissue paper onto the wood. Um, when you're using tissue paper on wood, there's a lot of really cute things that you can do. You can do this on the side of uh, one of those wooden crates that have the wood slats on the side. That's very cute for storage. You could do this on the side of a wood box and maybe put some cookies or muffins in it for a friend. Like I said, what I did is I put it on a piece of wood and I framed it. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna gather our materials and then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the process of putting the tissue paper on the wood. So get your stuff together and get ready. Okay, so here we go. What I'm starting with is I have a piece of Luan, which is a thin piece of wood, and I have it um, cut into a size that I like, and I painted white chalk paint on it. And I do want you to remember that when you're putting tissue paper on wood, whatever your paint color is on your wood is going to show through your piece of tissue paper. So um, I really like the white background, so I'm sticking with that. Um, this is kind of what we're doing here. I want you to remember too, tissue paper has a right side and a wrong side, just meaning that the wrong side is very light and the right side is much brighter. You can see the print a lot better. Um, what I'm gonna do is I want to make sure that I am getting what I want um, on my picture on my wood. So I really like these flowers and I don't mind if some of this, this right here is off the picture. So I'm just gonna kinda give myself a little line right there. I want you to remember that you're gonna get some wrinkles in your tissue paper, that's one thing. Um, and then another thing, because the tissue paper is so thin, you can't spend a lot of time moving it around. So once you kind of go off in maybe a wrong direction, just kind of roll with it and call it good. Because um, like I said, this isn't a perfect craft. So uh, what we're gonna do, like I said, I have my tissue paper, I have my prepared wood, I've got Mod Podge in a bowl and I've got my foam brush ready. And right over here, I have a piece of plastic wrap, uh, like cling wrap. Um, and you're gonna need that in order to smooth out your surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of pull my tissue paper here off to the side. And I want you to remember again, this is not a perfect craft. So I'm saying that just in case potentially I get into this and it gets, uh, kind of funky, I just want you to know that that's the way it goes. So, uh, what you're gonna do first, um, okay, I will say this, you only wanna move up the board a couple inches at a time. Do not put the Mod Podge over your whole board, you'll really end up with a mess. So, I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and put some on my board, a couple inches, and I will say, don't be, don't be too stingy with the Mod Podge. You really want it to grab onto your tissue paper and it's gonna dry. It's white, but it dries clear. So I'm putting a, a pretty good little coat here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up my tissue paper and lay it down. And like I said, with the tissue paper, once you're on, you're on. So. I'm gonna take my plastic wrap, once I put that part on, just lay it over, and then I'm just gonna kinda of, uh, smooth it down. You wanna use the cling wrap because if you just use your hands on the tissue paper, it's very easy to rip it. Um, and I suppose it's probably even a possibility to rip it when you've got the cling wrap. So go ahead and, and do that with your cling wrap, lift it up and off, Pull your tissue paper down to where, to where you um, put the last part on and do it again. Okay, so here we go. And like I said, don't be too sparing with your Mod Podge. 
I guess maybe I did about three inches there. Okay. There. And again, you're gonna have some wrinkles in this and it looks perfectly fine when you're done. I always try to remember that handmade stuff is not perfect like store-bought stuff simply because it's not made by a machine. Okay, so here we go again. This actually goes fairly quickly. Now, if you lay down your tissue paper, maybe on your first part, and you get it kind of crooked, I'm, I'm gonna suggest that you don't try to pick it up and off, that you just roll with it. Uh, doing a, a couple projects with this will help you perfect the process. Grab my tissue, my cling wrap again. Just make sure we are completely flat. All right. I don't know if you can see that, but I do have a good amount of wrinkles in here already, and I want to make sure, like any bubbling, you want to kind of smush it down. You want it to be flat. You don't want the bubbles coming up and off the the wood. All right. Okay, looks like we have about two more rows here. All right, another flip. I'm going to grab a different piece of cling wrap because the other one's getting kind of, uh, just kind of messy. I wouldn't try to do this with your hands because you will end up with tearing. And on that note, if you end up with tearing, I wouldn't try too hard to fix it. This is just one of those things that you need to kind of roll with what's happening. Okay, now I'm gonna do the last part here. You don't necessarily have to do it this fast. I'd probably encourage you to do it a little bit slower. This is for the sake of the video. I don't really want to have, you have to watch me do this for 15 minutes. So, there we go. Okay. All right. So, now what you're gonna wanna do, once you have your tissue paper completely on your wood. I want you to pull off your cling wrap, take a look at it. And it, like I said, it's totally fine to have the wrinkles. You just wanna make sure that the wrinkles are flat. Oops, and see right there, I tore it. But I'm gonna be honest, you're probably not gonna even notice. So I'm just gonna kinda of leave it like that. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, after this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a top coat of the Mod Podge. Mod Podge, it's actually Mod Podge. I've always called it Mod, Mod Podge. It's hard to get out of that habit. So again, you're gonna put a pretty good coat. This will dry clear and you can buy Mod Podge like in a satin finish, a matte finish, Whatever you like, I, I prefer the matte finish. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I can't think of anything to say. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go to the top of this, get this all coated, and like I said, don't, uh, one thing probably to remember is you don't want to go back and forth on this repeatedly to be getting, um, you know, brush strokes out. Just get it on and take maybe like the really thick Mod Podge off. Um, otherwise, just leave it. 
Then you're going to want to let this dry for um, completely. I would let it go for at least an hour. And then the way you want to finish it off here is either take a pair of scissors and just cut off your excess. Or when you're done, you can also just take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of lightly sand and your paper will fall right off. So there you have it. It's an easy technique and I hope you guys will use it. And I really hope that if you do use it, you either post a picture in comments or send me a picture. I would love to see how this works out for you. Happy crafting, guys.